Welcome to this special episode of the More Bikes podcast. Today we would like to present you an exclusive interview with the genius engineer Alan Millyard. Millyard is behind some of the wackiest bike creations, including his award-winning Flying Millyard. The Flying Millyard is powered by a gigantic 5-litre V-twin engine designed for an aeroplane. It resembles a two-wheel Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, and it was magically created in his modest suburban garage in Berkshire. Over his lifetime he has built more than 30 multi-cylinder machines, and he's still going today. The following was an exclusive interview which took place at the Carol Nash Motorcycle Mechanics Show at the Stafford County Showground. Resident Compare and Racing Star Steve Plater conducted the interview. Well, first of all, how did it all start? You know, what, what, what kind of industry and where, what do you come from? It all starts a long, long, long time back when I was about 12. I had a rally runabout. I wasn't allowed to have a motorbike, but I had one anyway. And the engine went wrong. But the lawnmower had a good engine, so I thought, put the lawnmower engine in the rally runabout. And it was so fast, it used to burn all my friends the rally runabouts off and saw the C100s. And it all sort of went from there. So I had this, not, not having much money when I was young, to pay for rounds, so you had to improvise, make do and mend in your garage with what tools you had. You didn't just ring up someone and say, can you make me this? You did it yourself. It all stemmed from there, really. And, you know, was your father a motorcycling man? What kind of background did yeah, you Yeah, he was a design engineer making cranes. British Royston Crane he worked for, company. He had a Valisair when he was younger, but he crashed it really bad in ground half his knee away on the cat's eyes. So he didn't want me to have a motorbike for that reason, but I think I just had to have one, so. <laughs> so leaving leaving school, what industry did you go into? Well, I, I basically, before I left school, I was metal work was all I wanted to do, metal work, all day. It's basically, back in the 70s, if you didn't like maths, you just created long enough, you could do what you like. I did metal work, basically all day. In fact, I used to go in lunch breaks, dinner breaks, after school, before school, just doing metal work. I was really hooked on it. So, that's, and I got an apprenticeship with the MOD, basically, when I was 16. And they give you a really good training. And I outturned as an instrument maker, making mechanisms and gears and things like brass. So it's really good. But when I was 15, I put a car engine in a BSA Bantam. An 850 Mini Cooper. A Mini Cooper, twin carbon. I mean, that's really valuable now. I'm just laying in a hedge. And I, I cut a Bantam in half and bolted it in. And I used to ride around the school. And then I got caught by the police. Two endorsements on my license when I was 14, 15. So when I got my new license at 16, I had to be really careful. So, um, <laughs> not Berkshire. Yeah. I, can't, I don't believe from Berkshire you, you're very poor. It's a posh area. It is posh, but yeah, it is now. Yeah. <laughs> So, you know, moving moving on, uh, you've created, we were chatting last night and, and this morning, you said you, you've pretty much made 50 machines now. I do, I've actually done a tot up, yeah, it's 49 bikes since 1996. And some of them are lost on as well. The 1004 Kawasaki, I've made 12 of them. Uh, uh, and why? You know, why, just, why not just go out? I mean, there's so many fabulous machines around there you can just go and buy from any retail outlet. It all started in 96. I had a one year old VFR 750 FK in red, white wheels. Absolutely gorgeous bike, but it's so boring. We just put petrol in it, changed the tyres every couple of months, and maybe some brake pads, and that was it. It was really fast, it handled, it stopped, didn't use any oil. So I sold that and bought a KH500 for 500 pounds and then I'm looking at it when I took it apart so I'd make this into a five cylinder and then I did put but I was too I didn't want to risk cutting up my KH500 so I bought an old S1B 250 for about 50 pounds and cut that up and did the conversion on that first and then literally a month later did the, did the 500 as well now there are so many different creations you've made uh, or, or should I say adapted or, or put your laid your hands on an engineered from a standard machine but you know obviously the the, the flying milliard obviously I'm very well aware of that being being a passenger on it around Jerby uh, Jerby circuit and you were a very good passenger hey no thank you thank you I have my eyes closed no no seriously that was great but you know something like that where where do those ideas come from is it purely yourself it is well, I'll get this inspiration I was at Salon Privé which is like a posh concourse and the elegance event, Scion House in London in 2012 with my SS100V twin, and I won an award. And when you got to get your award, the judges say to you, Thank, well done, congratulations, are we going to see you next year with a different machine? And I just literally said, I'll make the biggest V twin in the UK, just, just without even thinking about it. So I went straight home on eBay looking for big cylinders, and these Pratt & Whitney cylinders popped up from James Hewing from the National Motorcycle Museum, and we yeah. did a deal on them, and I picked them up. And within three months, the engine was running. 
and then another six months the bike was finished and I went back to Salon Privé and won best in show best motorcycling show the following year for me that's probably the most amazing thing is how fast you seem to turn everything around yeah if I'm on a mission like with the Vela set that was eight weeks because I was on so I'm doing some work other work now and I had to fit, fit it in with the time so I thought right I've got a couple of months let's get this bike knocked out so it's all hands on deck all on my own Anything, my friend Neil Howarth does all the painting for me, he paints all my bikes. Yeah. His bikes are won at Pebble Beach in America and cars, he's a okay. top notch painter. He puts it on really well, the paint. So, so I had to sort of knew that Neil was going to take six weeks to paint it. So the whole bike in total was about 12 weeks. So, of course, you must have a massive workshop at home for all these bikes and, and all, all these engineering uh, machines and capabilities. So it's the biggest misconception. You need to have a, you have to have every single tool from the Sealy catalogue and a big garage. You, you, you just need a few spanners, literally, just a few, some hard files and hacksaws, a nice lathe, like an old uh, Colchester lathe, a milling machine, and take a welder. And that all fits in an eight foot by eight foot square area if, you, if you're organised. That's all you need. And you can do everything at home except. And is that what you have? That's what I've got. That's not right. It's not. There's no excuses for anybody here. Including myself. I, I actually, back in 1999, I built engines here on the stand. I built an SS100 V twin engine, which I've got around there. Started it up on the Sunday. I built a 1300 Kawasaki 5, a 1004 Kawasaki, and a 4155 in three years in a row on the stand. We've nothing more than hacksaws and files. Do you know what? I get to meet various characters and, and special people doing the, the, the work that I do now since, since I, you know, I, I've kind of stopped uh, racing motorbikes but, and everybody's very different including you know uh, Henry Cole he's, you know, he, he's very different yeah. obviously he's got a massive history he's been yeah. on more planets in his time than Star Trek but, which is all he's very open about yeah. you know uh, and a great guy but uh, kind of a comes from a very wealthy background but, but loves the two wheel scene you know uh, and puts a lot of it obviously into practice and, and makes money from it yeah it's good I, I say I'm working with it now on some shows but it's, it's we have an absolute blast of a time I mean, what is it, people some people what makes me really sort of upset me some people slag him off online he's the nicest person in the world to work with he's really kind and very very passionate about motorcycling and we have just we have just such a laugh on the BSA Bantam or a Triumph Tiger Cup. I mean, I mean, you might have seen the wheelie I pulled on the Triumph Tiger Cup, which <laughs> not my finest hour. But we had such a laugh making that sequence. It's, it's, it's a bit of a release from being in the garage. Yeah, I bet. You know, it's, it's really, really good.